or their like. With their kind, there can never be progress for us without conflict. Look at history. The priests teach the people to pray. And while they're praying, what happened? The filthy capitalists take over. Like here in this town. Old Garcia dies. His son becomes president. And the son will be no better than the father. What is the good of all this prayer? We work for the food, and the Garcias eat it. Pedro, it isn't fair. The man that works must do the eating. Pedro, the people, the people must be led. And as president of the workers' union, you must help me lead them. How? In a new prayer, God bless Marx, Lenin have mercy on us, who owns the factories, really? The Garcias or us? We make the pipes. The Garcias own the factory. But we do the work. Why, to starve? Perhaps with a young Garcia, things will be different. Perhaps we can ride a donkey to the moon. No, Pedro. There would be no justice until the Garcias and their whole capitalistic system is destroyed. We must destroy it. Insight. An exploration in depth of the spiritual conflicts of the 20th century. Insight. How do you do? I'm Father Kaiser. The communist attack upon personal freedom in the democratic process is particularly bitter in Latin America. In many parts of the Southern Hemisphere, communist agitators seek to infiltrate the organs of society so as to preach their doctrine of atheistic world revolution. The communists consider class conflict inevitable. As long as men are free to own property, they say, those who do will exploit those who don't. But when the misery and degradation of the proletariat becomes bad enough, they will revolt, seize the means of production, and the result will be communism. It alone, they say, can solve the problems of society. The communists consider this a predetermined historical sequence, but they seek to hasten it. When class conflict exists, they seek to abet it. When it does not, they seek to create it. In promoting their cause, the communists have many allies, but none more powerful than the irresponsible capitalist who is so jealous of his own rights that he forgets the rights of others. These men divorce individual freedom from public service. They see the value of private property for themselves, but they feel no obligation to help other people enjoy its benefits. Without knowing it, these men are the best friends the communists have. The heroes of today's story find themselves caught between these two extremes. There you are, Carlos. It's all yours now. So this is what it feels like. To the Garcia's Machine and Foundry Company and to its new president, who's going to bring joy to the working classes. Your father must be turning in his grave. Tell me, Carlos, what do you plan to do? As I said, bring joy to the working classes. Well, you can't be serious. I've never been more serious in my life. I thought with, with your father's passing, you would, well, you would want time. You would want to take a cruise, perhaps. We could take care of things here till you got back. As the executive vice president, your father always depended on me. 
Well, so shall I. But I'm through with the tennis club. I think I'm going to enjoy being president. Yes, Carlos, but what do you actually know In about... In fact, I have already done a little homework. Our income for last year, 10 million. Our debits, 4 million. Our worth, 50 million. And I know that we're backed up two months on orders, which means we'll have a 4% higher income than we did last year. So you see, I do know something. I'm impressed, Carlos, and very happy. You've always been like a son to me. Salud. Salud. One thing bothers me. The riot at my father's funeral. The workers have formed a union. They like to make noise. Your father would have laughed at them. They must have a leader. Pedro Montes. Have Pedro Montes come in here right away. But Carlos, you're too quick. You don't know what you have just done. Never before have we had a worker here in this office. Now he'd be a hero after you talk to him. You will have recognized their union. Things will be worse than ever. Oh, Carlos, you're so inexperienced. Now, your father... My father is dead. Don't go. I would like you here. Pedro Montes is here, please. Send him in. Senor Montes? Si, I'm Pedro Montes. Carlos Garcia. Won't you sit down? Make yourself comfortable, Senor Montes. You know Senor Ortega? Si, Senor. I'm new in this office myself. It takes a little getting used to. It's very impressive. As it should be. I understand that you formed a union. I believe we have a right to. I believe you do. I studied unionism at the university. But why did your men act the way they did at my father's funeral? They were communists. You are not a communist? You know I am not. You seem to want the same things. You make it very difficult for us. What do you want, Senor Montes? More money. More money? <laughs> everyone wants more money. Everyone in this world. But everyone does not deserve it, Montes. It is my position that we do deserve it. And we have a union that will back us up. He's in here two minutes and he's threatening a strike. You see, Carlos, he condemns the communists, yet he's just as destructive. We're only asking for a living wage. For justice. Justice! It's up to us to decide what you're worth. Your work, your labor is a commodity. It's subject to the laws of supply and demand. Just like the pipes we make and sell. A strike is also built on the principle of supply and demand, Senor Ortega. But there is more to it than that. There is a difference between the human beings who work in the factory and the raw materials you bring in. People are not pipes. Gentlemen, gentlemen, now why should we argue? Senor Montes, if you had more money, what would you spend it on? Houses, education, doctors, medicine. It's difficult to begin. I understand. I'm a family man myself. I'd like to talk more with you about this. Perhaps you could come to my home for dinner, say, Thursday. Thursday will be fine, senor. Good. We'll see you then at 7. What in the name of all that's unholy did you just do? Oh. It won't cost me much to feed him dinner. Don't you realize that from the first moment he sets foot in your house, you'll be on the road to losing everything your father and I have worked for all these years? What did you work for, money? No, you worked for what money could buy. The same as little Montes. So you see, little Pedro Montes is no different than you or I. Yes, and if little Pedro Montes is no different than you or me or your father, he'll call a strike tomorrow, and in five years he'll be living right here in your house. No, he won't. Because we're going to give him exactly what he wants, to him and to his union. We're going to make him happy, even thankful. We are going to build him a clinic, free, 
built him a clinic? Oh, Carlos, you must listen to me. Don't you love your neighbor? It'll cost us one-tenth of what a raise would. And who knows? Maybe even the United States might help us pay for it. I wondered what those Jesuits had taught you at the university. Yeah, my compliments to them. Your father would be proud of you. you like the Chablis? It smells good. The wine, Senor Montes. Oh. oh. Excuse me, Senora. I am not used to such grandeur. Here, one could almost forget what life is really like for most of us. Well, then, for tonight, forget. Just enjoy yourself. Oh, I can't, Senora. It it makes it all the harder. You see, you represent 1% of the population here. But 30% of your workers live on the city dump. The dumps? Why? To survive. They know the schedule of the garbage trucks much better than your servants know when to serve your dinner. The, the, the dump serves as their school, too. It teaches their children well. They know how to sort garbage without getting sick to their stomach. How to separate papers and tin cans so they can be sold for a few centavos. How to pull rags and old clothes from the garbage without tearing holes in them because holes don't keep out the cold. Well, tell us of everything. What is the worst? The worst? A hard choice, senor. 25% of our babies die before they are two. 60% before they are 12. They die of diphtheria, smallpox, typhoid, pneumonia. But our children are lucky. There is one thing they do not have to fear. Old age. Ortega and I have decided to do something about that. We're gonna build you a clinic. Clinic. Thank you. A free clinic, senor. I said thank you, senora. The very best that money can buy. The best that money can buy. Thank you again. Is something wrong? You think that's what we want? Charity? Christ taught charity, senor. But when a gift is given in place, in place of a just wage, it is not charity. It is conscience money. Your children are dying, but you're too proud to accept a clinic? A free clinic? Oh, no. We, we accept. We must accept. We must say thank you. But only for the welfare of our wives and our children. For us, the workers, you have given us nothing more than an insult. Mother, I hear voices. Here. Come here, darling. You should be sleeping. This is Senor Montes. Oh, darling, please go give your father a good night kiss. Good night. Good night. Senor Montes? Tira? You're a very pretty little girl, Tira. Thank you. Can you picture her without a nose? Senor Montes! You said you wanted to hear the worst. Are you afraid to listen? Are you? Are you? I'm sorry if ugly things offend you, but your workers live in an ugly world. Do you know Antonio Valdez? No, I do not! What is work 
for you for 20 years. Tonight, before I came here, I went to see my friend Antonio. He has a little daughter, too. She was almost as pretty as your Tira. I say was, because she is pretty no longer. Last night, as every night, she said her prayers and she climbed into bed. And she fell asleep. But hungry eyes were watching her, waiting. She slept one of those ugly things bit off her nose. Your clinic. If it were, you think it would save her now? She's dying. But perhaps it's better that way. Her parents will not have to reproach themselves every time they look at their flesh and blood. Every time they look at their little girl who has a gaping, ugly hole where her nose should be. Will you excuse us, senor? The evening is late, senor Montes. Buenas noches. If I have made you a little ill, senor, I am sorry. But if I have made you think, I am not. How can you say a clinic is nothing? A clinic does not tear down filthy houses that breed rats. A clinic does not give a man the respect of his wife and children or the dignity to face himself. Your father's life meant all this to you. What will our life be? What will our life mean to our children? Perhaps I should give you the factory and forget the men whose money built it, whose money ran it. We own this factory, Senor Montes. You do not. No, we own nothing. We have no machines, no land, no Chablis, nothing. But we have our work. And like you have your land and your machines, we must get out of our work what we put in it. All we want is that chance. And the day you realize that, Senor Garcia, maybe that day you will be welcome in my home. to the fruits of his own labor. He is a free agent, and so has a right to what he freely creates. Private property is a basic need to the human personality. It enhances the individual's dignity by stimulating initiative and by developing in him a sense of personal responsibility. It also serves for his freedom. Those who own property are less susceptible to outside pressures and more independent of their surroundings. If you glance through history, you will discover that the denial of private property has always resulted in political tyranny. The man without property can so easily be enslaved by the totalitarian state. This does not mean that private property is an unlimited right. Those who possess more than they need are obliged to put their resources at the service of others. It was Andrew Carnegie who said, surplus wealth is a sacred trust which its possessor is bound to administer for the good of the community. In other words, the ownership of property is private but its use.
must be social. Those rich in brains, power, and the material things of life have an obligation to help the poor, and the poor have an obligation to help themselves. It is critically important that the maximum number of persons come to enjoy the advantages of private property. To bring this about is no easy job, but it can be achieved. Capital, labor, and government must all work together toward this end. Is this the way the upper class wind and dine you? Why don't you mind your own business? What did he offer? Uh, I don't understand very much of how we think. What did he offer? A free clinic. Did you spit in his face? Yes. <laughs> Pedro, you are going to make a good communist. Hey, you don't get mad when I say that anymore, huh? Good. Now you know that the capitalists understand only one language. What are you talking about? Money. Get Garcia where it hurts, in the pocketbook. Call the strike. Uh, there must be another way out. We're not looking for a way out. The men are beginning to wonder what you're made of in here. You know I'm always willing to fight for what's right. Prove it. Strike. Strike now. I should have known better than to have put confidence in such a fantastic idea. He says they want justice, not charity. Crawling things trying to stand on their hind legs. They probably call it evolution, but don't let that bother you, Carlos. Let them strike. We'll starve them. When their empty stomachs are crying, they'll beg us to take them back on our own terms. You would really do that, wouldn't you? How do you justify tactics like those? What do you suggest? Give them a raise? Possibly. I'll never sit still for it, nor will the stockholder. I'm a stockholder. You don't own the corporation. I own enough to be listened to. The workers have rights the same as we do. And I do not believe that we have been paying them a just wage. You see this factory out here? You inherited 40% of that without having worked one hour to earn it. Well, there's 30 years of me in it, 30 hard years. Your father and I worked hard to make this out of nothing. Now you want to give it away to a lot of cockroaches crawling around out there looking for a piece of sun to sleep in? You did not build that factory without workers. You cannot exist without workers, and Montes knows it. He needs us more than we need him, and if he strikes, he'll find that out. And if you give them a raise, you'll find out that your 40% isn't everything. I told you, no call. But, senor, the workers have formed a picket line. They are out on strike. Aren't you glad you put so much trust in them, senor Garcia? Carlos! 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 Señor Montes! Señor Montes. I like your signs. It's too bad that you don't believe in them. Who doesn't believe in them? You don't. This strike is unjust. It is not unjust. It is the only way we have. You made that clear last night. Now, can you say it's just to take your men on strike without warning, without an attempt at negotiations? I thought you negotiated last night. A free clinic, remember? That was last night, but I've thought about what you said. Do not trust him, Pedro. Do you represent this union? I'm part of it. I want to speak to you as the president of your union. You can bring any officers you want, and no one else. He's hurting, Pedro. Hurting bad. We'll talk alone.
changed my mind since last night. You changed it or the strike changed it for you? Both. But insults and lack of trust and no way to begin negotiations. You really want an equitable solution, Senor Garcia? A solution based on justice for the workers? I want more than that. I want justice not only for the workers. I want it for my stockholders, too. To be real, justice must be for all. I agree. The experience of Pedro Montes and Carlos Garcia is a revealing one. Class conflict is far from inevitable. Labor and management can work together for the common good. In many parts of the world today, labor and management have collaborated with the government in a climate of freedom to build a social order in which the benefits of private property are enjoyed by a great portion of the population and where the dignity of the individual is respected and its freedom is fostered. By working together for the common good, they have decisively refuted the communist contention that greed and exploitation are inevitable. They have shown that social justice can govern the workings of a free society. A concern for the rights of all can motivate both labor and capital. Rich men, powerful men can dedicate themselves to the common good. Yes, it can be done, but will it be done? That is the question. We must subordinate material to human values. We must use our resources to enhance the dignity of others. We must dedicate our freedom to the service of other people. We must perfect the workings of social justice in our own society. And we must do everything in our power to extend its blessings to the far corners of the globe. This is the best, the only way to destroy communism. Insight is a production of the Paulus Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.